These figures are, I mean, they're quite staggering, the numbers, aren't they? 62,336 people granted asylum in 2023, as I say, highest since records began in 1984. Uh, we also had 67,000 plus asylum applications last year. Well, that's down on the year before. We had 111,000 people uh, getting asylum support, 41% of those in hotels, costing us a leading fortune, let's be honest. Uh, we've also got a backlog that now stands at more than 95,000, although, again, that's gone down by 28% to 2022. A lot for a lot of figures, but basically, even where it is getting better, the numbers are still staggeringly high, are they not? Yes, I... Remember talking to you a couple of years ago, actually, Julia, <laughs> about this very point and more or less discussing the same issues. And I said that if it continued, if the government was incapable of taking people in, holding on to them and removing them quickly, then they would continue to come in increasing numbers. And sadly, as we saw yet again yesterday, more will die. That's the position we, we're yes, in. Yes, a, a good point. Three people are believed to have died in the channel yesterday. One body recovered, two still missing. Uh, uh, after another. Tragic. Well, again, a tragedy, and yet I do sort of think, well, if you choose to go and get on a rickety boat across well, the channel, although we are I, told actually a lot of these people don't realise quite how far and how dangerous that crossing is. It's, it's tragic because they're given to believe that all will be OK. Yeah. And indeed... Um, the traffickers say to them, don't worry about a thing because if you're in trouble, you're going to get the Brits or the French or the RNLI or whatever picking you up. So no worries at all. Yeah. And I, I'm afraid that the, the figure of 62,000 plus who've been granted asylum, that is really the crux of the issue. Yeah. The fact is that once you're here you apply for asylum, you will be granted asylum, and even if you're not granted asylum, you're allowed to you're stay. You're going to be able to stay. So and, of and we course, do people have, are going to come. We do have a much higher rate, I mean, I mean, absurdly higher rate of granting asylum than many other comparable European countries like Germany and, and France. One of the reasons why people Fr come France here, often in they've, particular. They, have failed, they have failed asylum claims in other countries. Yes, they're perfectly legally with under, under the conventions to travel and make their claim wherever they want. Again, something that a lot of us would disagree with, but nevertheless, it's legal. But... Oh, I've also been told, and, and do, do explain how this happens, that a lot of these people, they're not essentially having their asylum claims proven and told, yes, absolutely, we believe you are a genuine asylum seeker. It's just almost like the Home Office kind of giving up and just giving them leave to remain. So they're not actually proven to be people desperately in need seeking refuge. It's just the bureaucrats just go... Uh, no, absolutely. And I think Claire touched on it earlier. The fact is... They don't qualify for asylum, but then what do you do with them? And that's where the government is stuck, really. Rwanda and the Rwanda yeah. scheme is part and parcel of that. Fact is that Rwanda, the Rwanda scheme is never going to get off the ground in any significant okay. way. And if Labour get in, they're actually going to abandon it anyway. So it's, it's hardly a deterrent to those who want to come and here. It, and it never and... was. It never was. The scale, we're looking at a few hundred people at best. I mean, it's, it's, it's the population of the Bibby Stockholm on, arriving on one day. I mean, this is the thing. You've got, you've got a backlog of 95,000. You've got 111,000 people currently getting asylum support. But you've got the whole government policy is geared around putting a few hundred people on a plane to Rwanda. I mean, it's an absolute joke, isn't it? Well, it, it's a, a costly and, and lengthy joke um, that's yes. beginning to wear a bit thin now, frankly. I, yeah, uh, Rwanda, if it was introduced a couple of years ago and if it was applied rigorously, then I think it would have had some sort of effect. Uh, it hasn't been, it won't be, I don't think. Uh, what's going to happen in a year's time? Well, we're going to get more people coming in. Yep. And I dare say the Labour Party may even enter into some sort of arrangement with the EU, whereby we take a lot of those that 
frankly, they should be refusing, yeah. let alone allowing but, but this to get is a to, massive uh, issue. Look, come here. You've been you you know you've been part of this organisation, Migration UK, for a very long time, and from the moment it was uh, it was set up, there were accusations about you know you were you were scaremongering, even about you know, the number of people that were going to arrive in the UK when we opened up to the Eastern European countries, which of course even Migration UK's predictions were actually a lower estimate, but certainly, let's face it, it was rather more than the 13,000 a year that the British government had predicted all those years ago. That's how long you and I have been talking about well, this stuff. But this is the thing. You know, we've been castigated well, as, as people, you know, oh, you know, you're bigots, you're this, you're xenophobic, you're everything. Just saying, let's talk about the facts. Do, you know, do, do legal immigrants on la you know, largely bring net benefits to the country? Well, that's but paid to it. Do they bring growth? Well, we know that's not true anymore. Illegal migrants, are they all genuine? I don't think most people think that anymore. The conversation is turning, but the action doesn't seem to be following that. And yet, this is now probably, other than the no. cost of living, the biggest issue for virtually every government in Europe, for America, massive issue in the American election, um, both Biden and uh, Trump both visiting the Texan border, uh, where we see millions of people cross the border in the last year. This is this is an issue that is not going away. J Julia, it's not only not going away, but it's actually a small part of the problem. Yeah. When you look back at the figures we heard only very recently about the... the the net migration for 2022, 745,000 people. Even if that were to, say, fall back to around 600,000 a year, that will mean a population increase of 20 million people within 25 years. That's absolutely yeah. huge. And even if it came back to 350,000 a year, as, as some people have suggested, even that will mean an increase of population of 9 million people. That is something that we've got to think about seriously. Absolutely. The politicians are afraid to. They're afraid to tackle this yeah. seriously problematic Well, issue. the thing is, the, vote, the voters aren't afraid anymore. They're speaking out. It's very noticeable, isn't it?